In today's climate, nothing will make you a more accurate or confident shooter than Crimson Trace laser sighting systems. Get the immediate, decisive advantage of the world's only grip-integrated laser sights today. Shoot better. Stay safer. Crimson Trace. Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, Tom is celebrating 20 years on the air as only he can with a new gun. Only two more weeks to order the GT20, plus a new spokesman on the anti-gun side. You won't believe who it is. Got something to say? Call now and talk to Tom at 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. That's 866-825-5486. Now, here's Tom. Man, are we ready to have some fun today. I'm glad you are with us. Tom Gresham here, back from Germany. We were over at the EWA show last week, had a great time. Hope you enjoyed the show. We had a, a lot of fun over there and got a ton of good information. We were able to get some people on the show we don't normally have access to because, of course, we had European gun and optics and ammo companies there with us. So we were able to spend some time with them and, wow, 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 do they have some gorgeous guns <laughs> At that place. And, and some weird stuff that we don't see over here. I was, one of the surprises for me when I was at the IWA show, it, and that is the European SHOT Show, if you will. It's where manufacturers show their goods and they, the distributors are there. I was surprised at how many sport utility rifles, modern sporting rifles, were there. AR types. Um, and I, I, I'm not sure to what extent... The citizens can own those, or if it's primarily military law enforcement. But it was interesting. Of course, on the other side, you get to see the the pretty guns, the Parazzi's, the gorgeous Blazers, Rigby's, Mausers, lots of engraving, beautiful things. Man, g- gorgeous stuff. One of the things, I guess, perhaps my biggest takeaway from all of that was becoming reacquainted, and I'm sure I knew at one point and just kind of lost that information, becoming reacquainted with the fact that shooting is popular everywhere. Gun ownership, there are a lot of countries that we tend to think of as not having gun ownership, but actually they do. You know, we say, well, you know, they don't have guns in England. Well, actually they do, and in Germany, and in Switzerland, and in France, and in other... It's different. They certainly have to jump through more hoops than we do in the United States. And, of course, they do not have a Second Amendment. So you have to say, Mother May I. Of course, it's getting to be a little bit like that here to some extent. I note that West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin, speaking about the measure before the legislature in West Virginia, this would be where it would give them constitutional carry. That is, you would be able to carry concealed without a permit. You wouldn't have to say, Mother, may I? You wouldn't have to ask the permission. And Joe Manchin, the senator from West Virginia, U.S. senator, says that's a bad idea. Now, Joe Bills himself is a real Second Amendment guy, member of the NRA, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But he wants you to have to ask the permission of the government before you can exercise a constitutional right. Hmm. Sorry, Joe, not buying that one. Don't don't think. I just, come on, I don't think you need, you should have to ask the government's permission to exercise a constitutional right because by definition, if it's a right, you have it. If you have, have to ask permission, it's not a right, it's a privilege that is granted to you. How many times have you heard somebody misquote the Second Amendment? They'll say, well, you know, the Second Amendment uh, grants us the right to keep and bear arms. No, it doesn't. The Second Amendment grants nothing. The Second Amendment simply says, hey, you guys, you guys who are about to sign this Constitution, we're, we're going to stake out some ground here and make sure you understand there are certain areas you have to keep away from because we have these rights before you sign this Constitution. We're going to, in fact, we're going to come up with 10 of them. Ten, we're going to call them uh, the Bill of Rights. These 10 rights 
that we have these before there is a Constitution, before there is a United States of America. We just want to make sure that everybody understands this is an area you can't get into. So nothing was granted. The Second Amendment stakes out pre-existing rights, as do all 10 of the Bill of Rights, 10 amendments that make up the Bill of Rights. Our number is 866-TALK-GUN. You can give me a shout. We're pretty much open lines right now. I've got a few things that I want to talk about, a burr or two under my saddle. A little later in the show, we'll be talking about a... Uh, how, I, I'm at a loss for words. I don't even know where to go with this. Snoop Dogg, as your financial planner, telling you to disinvest yourself of gun companies. Now, there's a whole... There's a whole lot more to that story. We'll get into that in just a little bit. 866-TALK-GUN. Line three, Rudy is with us out of San Antonio. Hello, Rudy. Thanks for calling. Hey, Tom. How are we doing today? I am having a ball. Yes, I, I got, a, I got a, a couple questions on some, I think it's called Tula Ammo, that Russian uh, yep. Yep. Uh, ammo. Uh-huh. I, it's I've called Tula. Hearing, yeah, I've been hearing this and that. It's good. It's bad. It's poison. It's... I don't know. Could, could you <laughs> tell me? Could you tell? I mean, because I want to. I want to stock some ammo for my two two three, but mm-hmm. but I, but it's being steel. I I don't understand. Yeah, it's steel me. case ammo is uh, Tula steel case ammo. The thing you have to watch out for if it's um, and there probably are people that know this a whole lot better than I do, but if it's lacquer coated. I know people uh-huh. who shoot Tula ammo all the time, and it works just fine in their guns. Uh, uh-huh. Let me ask you a question. All right, when you're shopping, how much money? What's the price difference between that and regular brass case ammo? Wow, well, it's uh, I'm guessing five, ten dollars. Uh, if I was to get a box of fifty, I mean, it, it varies. Different stores, different. You know, it's um, it, it's a lot cheaper. Right. That Russian that stuff, Russian stuff is cheaper. Yeah, it is. I just, uh, of course, I'm. <laughs> I don't buy stuff by the, when I buy two two three. I buy it by the thousand rounds at a time. It's just because right, it, right. it doesn't it doesn't last that long for me. So right, uh, right. I'm I'm looking at how much it, it's probably I don't know twenty five thirty five probably as much as ten cents a round, which adds up. But still, it's ten cents a round. Here, here's what wow. I believe. I what you ought to do is buy a couple of boxes of it and try it in your gun. See if it functions well, if you if it shoots and you like it, and you go, okay, that works fine. Don't worry about it. Then shoot it. It's fine. Uh, if for whatever reason your rifle doesn't like it, then you can switch to something else. I wouldn't, without testing it, I wouldn't go out and buy 5,000 rounds of it because I'd want to make sure that it works okay in my rifle. But if you shoot it and you like it and it functions well, I see no problem with it at all. Okay, what about the... Just say everything works fine out for me. You know, I like mm-hmm. it. What about if I was to buy it by the can? And what what would be the shelf life? And would I have to put those uh, moisture absorbers in my safe or anything like that? <sighs> shelf life uh, on ammo is probably somewhere on the order of half a century. Probably fifty years is a, a good number to work off of. So. As long as you keep it, here's the thing. Ammo should be kept comfortable, like in a setting where you would be comfortable. An attic is really a bad idea because attics are hot and humid. But if it's a place where you would be comfortable, basically cool and dry, yeah, 50 years is the half-life. I love that. <laughs> so, uh, but if you're if it's where you would be comfortable, I think it will last a long, long time. Okay, cool. All right, good deal. Well, look, I I wish you luck with it. I appreciate the call. 866-TALK-GUN will get you in here. 866-TALK-GUN or just dial one Tom Talk Gun. I'm Tom Gresham. We'll be right back with more Gun Talk. Ammo can be expensive and hard to find. No problem. Train at home with the Score Time Laser Trainer Target from LaserLight. Use the Trigger Time Laser Pistol and you can train at home with scoring, timing, and shot display. No matter the weather or ammo availability, you can train at home and have fun with this laser training system from LaserLight. To see more, go to LaserLight.com. That's LaserLite.com. 
36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. Making news 30 years ago, the modern Internet made strides when five supercomputers were linked to form a network. It was the same year ArmScore entered the U.S. market. What a coincidence. Why not use the Internet to celebrate? Get big online discounts and rebates on the world's number one selling 1911s from Rock Island Armory and quality ammunition from ArmScore. Get yours at ArmScore.com slash gun talk. ArmScore, USA strong for 30 years. I don't know if this is real or if it was one of those fake hoax videos. There's a video making its way around last week of some guy at the range shooting a shotgun, and it looks as though he had a possibly a hang fire, it didn't go off. And he looks down the barrel, and in the process, the gun goes off and blew, blows a hole through the bill of his cap, almost shoots him in the head. Um, whether or not that's real, it does bring up a an item that we probably ought to touch on because you know we talk about safety a good bit and safety procedures and sometimes things that I think people know turns out they don't know. If you pull the trigger on your gun and it doesn't go off, it's a bad idea to turn around and look down the barrel because there is a thing called a hang fire. That is, it can take. Part of a second, a second, three seconds, five seconds, ten seconds before it goes off, and then it goes off. If you pull the trigger and it doesn't go bang, keep the muzzle pointed down range for about ten seconds. And then keep the muzzle pointed down range while you unload the gun completely. Only when the gun is absolutely positively unloaded, magazines out, slides been racked, shotgun's been pumped, 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 and you have then inserted, listen carefully, please, inserted your little pinky finger into the chamber of your firearm while the muzzle is pointed in a safe direction downrange, and you can feel with your little pinky finger that there's no cartridge in the chamber of your gun, only then... Should you cease to point the gun down range, and you can deal with what you know now it could be whatever you know uh why do you we always say check visually and check you know tact tactically it's not not like tactics but you're using tactile uh why would you stick your finger down there? Well, sometimes there's mm, the back end of a cartridge case can be dark, and you actually can't see there's still a cartridge in the chamber, even though you're looking in there. And besides, it's just a good idea. You may at some point need to check the chamber in the dark just to make sure that it's empty and running a finger in there is a good idea. You'll see. And it's one of the interesting things is that, is that in my experience, at least, the people I hang around with, the more experienced they are, the more safety conscious they are. They typically don't get more casual. If they're serious about it, if they're getting ongoing training, if they're hanging around with top people, They tend to be more careful. If you find yourself at any time, and it's easy to do, if you find yourself at any time getting a little casual, give yourself a swift kick in the butt and ramp up your safety protocols, okay? We all have to do this occasionally and go, okay, let's go back to the basics, you know, four rules of gun safety, all the rest of it, okay? Paul has called in from Tampa. He's on line two. He's got a range report for us. Hey, Paul. Hey, this is good old Paul, and good on you, Tom. <laughs> what you got there? Well, I picked up uh, the weekend after Obama won the election, 
a Remington 7615. This is a pump action 223 that is advertised to take AR-15 magazines. And I thought with the AR-15s drying up, that might be a good thing to have. Okay. So I took it to the range. Or rather, before I took it to the range, I put an M16 magazine in it uh, this last weekend, tried for the first time, and uh, I could not get the bolt to go over a magazine either direction. And I went online, and one guy says, well, uh, you need to shave the bolt, and that sounded wrong. And another guy yeah. said, well, it will work if you put some rounds in the magazine. And I don't have any snap caps. I'm not about to load the mag a rifle in the house that may have a malfunction play with it. So I mm -hmm. took it to a gunsmith, and his solution was to shave the lips on a magazine. And then when I took it to the range, I had nothing but miss feeds and double feeds. And I didn't want to leave the range hating this rifle because I really liked it. Mm -hmm. And the people at the range loaned me another AR-15 magazine that had not been modified. And guess what? The guy on the Internet who said it's supposed to do that was right. Uh, another guy at the range explained it's a safety feature. When the uh, magazine's empty, the follower locks the bolt from going either direction. But when there's a round in it, it will work. And I'll okay. tell you, this is the first bolt or pump action anything I've ever had. And it's kind of neat. Yourself making everything cycle as opposed to letting some hot gas do it. It's kind of Isn't a that manly deal. That, that, that's an interesting take because I've, I've shot pump rifles in the past. Uh, I've used pump shotguns you know, all my life. I guess I've always taken it for granted, but I, I understand what you're saying. The idea of I'm actually operating this gun, not some gas or something. But I want to circle back to, um, first of all, let's see. We had a gunsmith that shaved the lips of your magazine. I'm not sure I would be taking that gunsmith any gun of mine at that point. And number two, magazines traditionally can be problematic. In this case, the magazine was functioning the way it's supposed to. Um, I guess the, one of the questions I would ask you, did you just happen to read the owner's manual? I did, and it said use AR-15 magazines. And I thought but it didn't say anything about it locking it up. No. If it said that, hmm. In my uh, scatterbrained way of reading things, I never saw it. <laughs> I, boy, do I understand that one. I'm thinking, yeah, I read the book, but I didn't see that. How many times have I done that? Well, I'm glad you got it worked out, and I appreciate the range report. I, I think a pump uh, rifle is pretty cool. I've used them. I had, what the heck was that? A pump 35 Whalen, uh, the Remington 7, 760. I think it was 762. I can't remember. Um, this is way back, a long time ago. And that was a pretty cool rifle. So, yeah, I like pump rifles. I appreciate the call. Thank you, sir. I had a buddy who had a pump. the heck was that? 35 Remington. I think it was chambered for. Man, could he shoot that thing fast. Somebody that knows how to run a pump can really shoot quickly. Monty's in uh, Tioga, North Dakota on three. Hey, Monty, thanks for calling. Yeah, Tom, I'm calling because I keep hearing people talk about constitutional rights. And... Mm -hmm. You don't probably know it, and most of the audience probably don't know it. But about the time of 1860, somewhere around the time of Abraham Lincoln's death, there was a bunch of people who took the U.S. and made it a corporation. They do not operate under the U.S. Constitution. They pretend to be a legal government. If you ever look at all caps, if you ever look at the Flag in the courthouse, it's a gold fringe, means it, meaning it's maritime. And there is a republic for the United States. It's either parallel or interim. We have no power, no force, and no authority. Monty, let me, let me interrupt you for a second. Let me ask you, where do you get this? Sir, I'm a senator from the Republic of the United States. I've been in it since 2010. Okay, Monty, thanks for your call. Do me a favor. Don't ever call us again, okay? That's just enough of this nonsense. You just, I mean, come on. You make us look and sound like idiots when you say things like that. No. Good grief. I mean, come on. I'm a senator for the United States just because I say that I am? 
Ay, 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 ay. Um, I was, we're getting ready to shoot, by, we're going to shoot three, yeah, we're going to shoot three episodes for Gun Talk Television Show next week. Uh, not this coming week, but the following week. Going to have some fun with it, do some interesting things. We're going to do a show on recoil. <laughs> I'm talking to Mike McNett over at Double Tap. He's going to come in. He says, oh, I got something for you. I said, what you got? I got a 505 Gibbs shooting what is it? I think he said, was it a 16, no, 600 grain bullet, 147 grains of powder. It's like 11 or 14 pound. Right, I can't wait. Uh, it, this is going to be huge fun. Uh, recoil, managing recoil is a big deal. And the better you can do it, the better you will shoot. Let me repeat that. The better you control recoil, the better you will shoot. Whether that means going to a lighter kicking gun, a lighter kicking caliber, a heavier gun that recoils less, putting a compensator on your gun, a muzzle brake, a suppressor, uh, or learning techniques that help you manage recoil. Uh, Just this morning, had another person say, yeah, my wife went to the store and the clerk... Uh, to talk to her into buying a 38 caliber revolver. She hates shooting it. Yeah, well, guess what? So do most of us. I would like to personally hurt all the gun show clerks, or our gun store clerks that pawn those off on women. Yeah, what you need is a little snub nose 38. They're hard to shoot. They tend to recoil a lot. Uh, just they're, they're great guns in the hands of somebody who really can shoot and knows what they're doing with them. But good grief. Uh, no. You know, just the short course here is that uh, you do not get to buy a personal defense gun for your wife. She needs to go take lessons. You need to buy her a lesson or two. Try some different guns. Practice with them. And then figure out what works for you. Okay? I mean, good grief. We'll talk about that when we come back a little bit. Tell you what. I do want to tell you a little bit about our project. We only have, no, 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 as of today, today's the Ides of March, by the way. We have two weeks left for the GT20, our cool gun talk project pistol, for you to get involved with that, to get your order in, get your deposit in. Hey, when we come back, we'll have more details about the GT20 right here on Gun Talk. Want to be a guest on the show? Drop us a line at info at guntalk.com. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. Oh, yeah, we're having some fun. That's because we're talking about guns. <laughs> I just recorded a, uh, a bonus podcast. We'll do That'll be up in a few days here. It was kind of fun doing it about Bill Jordan, the Border Patrolman, exhibition shooter, and the author of what I think is the book, Best book on gun fighting, at least it certainly has the best title for any book on gun fighting. The name of the book was, and is, No Second Place Winter. Winner. In other words, there is no second place winner in a gunfight. You win or you don't survive. Bill Jordan. We'll have that uh, out for you in a few days. By the way, if you don't, if you're not getting the podcast, you're missing out on a lot. Because we do the after show every week, and it's available as a podcast, and we cover a lot of things that you may or may not be privileged to on the regular show. A lot of, a lot of information out there for the podcast. And, of course, a lot of ways to get that. You go to guntalk.com to look that up. By the way, speaking of guntalk.com, we're giving away stuff. We love it. Uh, Timney Triggers giveaway this month. If you go to guntalk.com slash win, the grand prize winner this month is going to get a $750 gift certificate to use at timneytriggers.com. A lot of fun stuff there, in addition to triggers. Also, every week, believe it or not, every week we're giving away 10 first prize winners. are going to get the Timney Triggers Tension Scale. That's a trigger pull scale. So we're giving 10 of those a week. You need to enter right now, guntalk.com slash win. Get you in there. I mentioned the, uh, the GT20. That is our project pistol, only, well, 15 days left, 16 days. Uh, at the end of the day on March 31, we close it down, not taking any more orders or deposits. This is the P220 SIG pistol, brand new in 10 millimeter that I spec'd out. Uh, it has adjustable rear sight, fiber optic front sight, ambidextrous safety, 
a fabulous, no kidding, great single action trigger pull. It's it's a all steel five inch barrel single stack ten millimeter. Wow, what a gun! It is really really cool. If you haven't seen it, we have the video of it uh, at on our YouTube channel. If you look for Gun Talk TV on YouTube, you'll find it, or you can just search for GT Twenty Gun Talk and you'll see the the video. So we have some close up pictures of it and also some video of me shooting it. It's um, you got to love YouTube and the comments you get. Some of the comments we get on our First Person Defender show are outrageously funny. Uh, people second-guessing when you're in a self-defense situation. Well, you know, uh, I would just shoot through the walls if I had a bad guy over there. You know, the bullets go through walls. And then the next guy says, well, you don't want to use a two two three because that shoots through all the walls of your house and it'll go out and hit all your neighbors. I'm just you're scratching your head and you're going, wow. That... Uh, Call of Duty thing is really working for you, isn't it? Man, weird, weirdness weirdness abounds out there. Oh, by the way, if you want to uh, get into that order, as I say, there's only two weeks left for your GT20 pistol because when they're gone, they're gone. This is just a fun project. There'll be a probably, by the time we're done, a couple hundred, 300 of them are going to be made. That's probably going to be about it. We said it would be um, limited to 1,000, but we didn't know if, how many we were going to run because we're just, it was only available for a very brief period of time. Go to duriesguns.com, D-U-R-Y-S, duriesguns.com. That'll get you in there. First, let's go to line three, where Mike is with us out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Hello, Mike. Hey, Tom. I just wanted to call and congratulate you on 20 years, and thank you for all you did for our community, and let you know that the SIG uh, anniversary edition that y'all created, is a, it's a beautiful gun. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So, what are you doing up in Shreveport? What, are you, what kind of shooting are you doing up there? Uh, I actually uh, just put together a, uh, a AR pistol uh, in two two three that I've been oh. working on. Cool. You, you, did you build it? Uh, yeah. All righty. So, what are you what are you going to do with your AR fifteen pistol? Aside from taking it to the range, it's probably not much. So I'm here to practice, but it sure is fun. <laughs> You're probably like everybody else. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but by golly, I got it. Look, I appreciate the call. Hey, look, let me take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll actually talk with Johnny Dury. He's lined up, ready to chat with us about this cool pistol project that we worked on together. Our number here, 866-TALK-GUN. We'll be right back. The Ruger LCRX is a variation of the LCR that features an external hammer, allowing it to be fired in single action mode. The LCRX can also be fired in double action mode. It features a monolithic frame made from aerospace grade 7000 series aluminum, a patented Ruger friction reducing cam that results in a smooth, non stacking trigger pull, and a patent pending polymer fire control housing that significantly reduces weight and helps reduce recoil. The Ruger LCRX Revolver, another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger. The 45 Auto, also known as the 1911, is the standard other defensive pistols are measured against. No matter what pistol you carry, techniques developed around the 1911 are vital. You know you need training. And you know your concealed carry class definitely was not training. Now Gun Talk presents an exciting DVD, Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. Tiger's unique training style will have you drawing, moving, shooting, and running your gun better, no matter what style pistol you prefer. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can order our DVDs of Tiger's instruction. ShopGunTalk.com also has a two-DVD set, including Concealed Carry One. Get both for the information you know you need. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com has DVDs, books, and other essential gear. ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Brownells proudly celebrates 75 years of history and heritage as the world's first choice for firearms, accessories, ammunition, and gunsmithing tools. So whether you're a gunsmith in need of parts and supplies, a new shooter looking for the perfect holster, or a skilled competitor seeking the latest gear, Brownells has what you need. And best of all, every purchase comes with the industry's only forever satisfaction guarantee. Visit us at brownells.com. 
No matter what gun you have, you want it to hit harder, shoot faster and flatter, and be more accurate. You get all that with the ammunition from Double Tap. Double Tap's experts select the best bullets, then load them to higher velocities while keeping safe pressures. Shoot small groups. Shoot farther. Use custom hunting loads in your handgun or rifle. Even fire two projectiles with one shot. DoubleTapAmmo.com. That's DoubleTapAmmo.com. Back with you, 866 Talk Gun. Let's bring in right now Johnny Dury from Dury's Guns, Dury'sGuns.com. Hey, Johnny, how you doing, man? I'm very well. How are you, Tom? I am good. I've had a, I mean, as you saw, I got a chance to actually take the uh, the GT20 pistol out and shoot it. Made a little quickie, <laughs> talk about quick and dirty video we made of it, but it sure was fun. That was an awesome video. I was really impressed with it. We played it in front of all of our salesmen at the shop and posted on our internet site and got links to it. And that thing, the first day that it uh, came up on YouTube, we sold 35 guns that day off of it. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> so, well, you know, there's just that, nothing like seeing it being shot and you go, okay, I, now I get it. That's exactly right. That, um, uh, we were, we were all impressed about how good the video quality was of it. It was, uh, it was fantastic, especially that slow motion, seeing that gun, function and all and you know it really didn't look like it kicked that terrible bad you know it, it really didn't although i did have one guy and we left the comment up one guy says yeah you said it didn't kick but i could see it was rocking you and i'm thinking no you haven't seen me shoot a big kicking gun like a 44 magnum or something like that well that's I didn't right think it and it's much 10 millimeters supposed to kick some well if it didn't what would be the point <laughs> that's right <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah I mean, it's, but, it's, and the grouping, it, it, I was I was impressed with your shooting of it, too. That was some pretty tight groups for first time out of the box. Well, yeah, of course, we use wide-angle lenses, and it makes it look like it's a long <laughs> way. I was only four feet from the target, actually. So, oh, okay. You know, well, if you're not cheating, you're not trying, Johnny. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> no, it's truly, the, the gun shoots great. As you can see in there, it has adjustable sights, and for me... It probably that particular gun is shooting a little bit high and a little bit left. I didn't even take the time to just adjust it over, but all you have to do is do a few clicks and it would be in there. Uh, right. I, I just think this is a gorgeous pistol. I really do. Yeah, I do too. I think that thing turned out, I think it turned out real well. Those grips really set that gun off. And, um, you know, it's just nothing else like it out there that, especially the single action trigger pull on it that just makes it, it makes it so nice. And being ambidextrous is just going to work for everybody on that. Uh, you know, it's a big, okay, heavy I, gun, but, you know, that's it's going to fit. It's going to make that gun comfortable to shoot. If you made it light, it just wouldn't be any fun to shoot. Yeah. Uh, so and I have to give you I, credit. I Johnny, Johnny kept me out of the weeds on this one because we were going all over the place with different metal finishes and different cool colors of grips and everything. Johnny says, no, don't do that. I, and you're saying... Tom, you really don't want to go with those crazy colored grips and all this other stuff. Just simple. Go, go simple. And you kept telling me, no, don't do that. And when we finally got it in this, the way it looks now, I'm going, Johnny was right. This thing looks great. <laughs> it, it does. It looks great. And it kept the cost down on it, too. You know, one of the one of the deals we wanted to do with is want to keep it affordable. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, some of those extra finishes and those different grips, all that's going to do to add to the price of it really didn't make it look any better than it looks now. I think it, I think it turned out just right. Yeah, it did. Uh, and by the way, when you look at, uh, I just want, I have people comment, when you look at the picture of it on your website, the duriesguns.com, that was a Photoshop mock-up, and the trigger there is the trigger on a DASA gun. It's actually, that's not the correct trigger. That was kind of a Photoshopped, very, very early version. What you want to do is look at the video, and you can see that it is, in fact, a single-action trigger. Yeah, that's right. That's all we had to put on there. And since uh, right. uh, you've got the only one that's out there, and we didn't have it in the store, we wanted to have it up before the guns had even shipped you one. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, the picture in the video is correct on it. Yeah, and people have said, well, you know, are you sending that back? You say, are you kidding me? You've got to be kidding, right? This one's never going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that one's never going to go anywhere. 
No, that's yeah. the cool I, I just told I Sig that's to a, get our shipments on it. Yeah, I, I told Sig just look, just send the invoice. Don't even look for this one to come back. I mean, because you know we get all these guns into test and all, and we're we're forever you know sending guns back and. You know, this one, you go, no, this one's going to live here. This is here forever. I will tell you, you know, the thing you can't do in the video, Johnny, is you can't show people what it feels like. You have felt this gun in your hands. Describe, because people say, well, how thick is the grip? And it's not thick at all. No, it's not thick at all. With that single action, I mean, with that single stack magazine and those g grips, uh, it keeps it pretty thin in there. Uh, you know what I what I feel about that gun more than anything is it feels like the balance is right. Doesn't feel front heavy. Hmm. Doesn't feel like a big clunky thing in your hand. Um, you know, it's a heavy gun, but it feels like it's balanced right. And uh, it that that was pretty evident in it when you were shooting it. It wasn't trying to jump and torque in your hand. Had some muzzle rise to it, but it looked like the gun was was doing just exactly as we planned it to do. But um, Mm -hmm. so what I would say in that is um, it feels balanced, right? It's a good way to put it. And it does. It feels uh, what the term is. If proper, it feels like a well-designed gun. It sits in your hands, even though it's heavy. And you you and I have both shot guns where they're very muzzle heavy and you kind of have Mm -hmm. to keep cranking back on it. This one doesn't feel like that at all. No, it doesn't. It, and it, if we, if you look at that video, when you recover from those shots, it goes right back on target. And that's a big deal with it. The grip angle of the gun and the, the weight of it and all is just right. It settles right back down in for that second shot. And you're not having to find where the sights are on it. It just goes right mm-hmm. back to a natural position because the balance is right. And, and with that fiber optic sight, it just pops where it drops back on you know the uh, line of sight. You can pick it up. I want to tell people that if they want to see, we're talking about the video, and they can't see it right now. If they want to see it, they can just go to your website. You have it right there at durysguns.com, D-U-R-Y-S guns.com. And you click on the, the GT20, and you can take a look at the video. Uh, now, we are shutting this off at the end of workday on the 31st of this month, right? That's right. It'll actually shut off at midnight of the 31st. I mean, our website runs 24 hours a day, so okay. they'd have till midnight of uh, the 31st. And you can either get in, a, uh, put in a complete order or get a deposit down on it. I'll, and all the information's there. We don't have to tell them about that. But if you go to durysguns.com. Uh, I've yeah. also had some people ask it about uh, ammo and you know what ammo to use for it. That's one of the beauties of the 10 is you have such a wide variety. You can use fairly light ammo or big, heavy hunting loads. Right. Yeah, it's 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 so nice on that because you can take it and practice with it with something that's not going to kick you too hard and make it pleasant to go to the range with and get uh, good with. And then you can go hunting with it and put some of the heavier loads in it. And, you know, when you're going to go hunting with it, just like you know with everything, you shoot the deer with it or shoot the hog with it, you don't feel the recoil. Right. Right. Now the so, pistol comes with the pistol comes with two mags, and you have uh, extra mags available there for order. So, I always recommend you ought to have at least one extra beyond what comes with it. I would say three would be my minimum. That, that that's right. Three would be uh, just right on it. And you know, if you're going to go to the range a bunch with it, you know, you may even have another one. Then you have a couple of range mm-hmm. magazines, and then you have your hunting or your protection magazines um, that stay as fresh as possible. Uh, so, Absolutely. you know, three or four magazines with that. And then the deal is, is uh, while we're doing this thing, it'll be easy to get extra magazines now. But as you go further down the road and you're all over the different parts of the country, that 10 millimeter magazine may be a little bit hard to find uh, in the yep. stores without having to order one. So best to order Good. it now with it. There you go. Hey, Johnny, I appreciate you sharing your, your take on that. I want to drive people to the website again. It's Dury's Guns. Dot com, D-U-R-Y-S guns.com for our little fun project. It commemorates the 20 years of gun talk being on the air. Johnny Dury, of course, not only sell them, he helped me design the darn thing. So we appreciate that. Check it out, get your order in, or you will lose out forever. heading of you big dummy johnny dury as we we're going off he says hey dummy 
Don't forget to tell them that the GT20 comes with the Dury's Lifetime Guarantee. Duh. Yes, it does. Dury's Guns offers a lifetime guarantee on all the guns they sell, used or new. So, yeah, the GT20 comes with a lifetime guarantee from Dury's Guns. They have a team of gunsmiths who will work on guns and repair things and take care of things. So, ah, I can't remember. I forgot. Well, you know, I get so excited about the uh, the features, the benefits, and how fun it is to shoot uh, that I forget that kind of stuff. So, yeah, when you go to Dury'sGuns.com, you'll see that, all that information. Uh, I mean, we're serious. This is not – somebody said – was asking me about the project. I said, look – I'm not a gun salesman. I don't work. I don't sell guns for a living, okay? This is just a fun project. We said we're going to do this thing because it would be fun to commemorate the 20 years of doing the radio show. And we'll make, you know, a few of them. And it looks like it's probably going to be, you know, honestly, it's probably going to fall between two and 300. Because we put one of 1,000 on the gun because we wanted to limit it to that. But it's going to be probably fewer than that. As I say, <laughs> that's not my business. But it's a fun project. And I'm real glad to do it. I'm just glad to be able to get... SIG to help us out with it. We badgered, a lot of us actually badgered SIG into making the 10 millimeter version of their P220. So it, it turned out really well. I mean, it's very, very nice. Let's talk to John on line two. He's in Shreveport, Louisiana, Keogh country. Hey, John. Maybe he's not. Maybe John walked away. He's he's at the loading bench right now. He's making money. Hey, I'm John. Here, here. Hold on. I'm here. Hold on. <laughs> I had an okay, issue with my we're phone for on. a second. All right, uh, we got you. No, just came back from the range. I went out, took a Savage Axis that I've been, you know, working on since I bought it. Had a friend mm-hmm. took a Mosin, and we had a couple of the ARs, AR-15s in a rifle platform. Um, and I was listening to the show on the way home, and you were talking about managing recoil. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm interested in knowing how to manage recoil on that axis because it's got this little bitty plastic lightweight Tupperware stock on it that I absolutely can't stand. <laughs> and that was going to be my first step. <laughs> I love your description. Okay. Well, all right. Recoil, of course, is physics. You know, if you shoot uh, heavy load out the front end and you got a lightweight gun, it's going to kick more. That's a given. So you got a fairly lightweight stock on this gun. Beyond that, yes, some s- stock designs kick more. They feel like they kick more. There are, I'm going to come up with like two or three things for you to do to help manage that. Obviously, you could go to a heavier stock, but you probably don't want to go pour any money into that. That's not a particularly expensive rifle anyway. Um, well, that was the idea. First, I bought this with plans to build it up over time and uh, still have a functioning rifle as I do it. Well, a heavier stock is going to help control recoil. A classic design to the stock, think of um, a Dakota rifle stock. The design of that stock, while beautiful, is also very functional because it keeps the recoil coming straight back. Monte Carlo stocks, to my mind, are not as functional. Uh, So that's a possibility. A muzzle brake is a great design. A a muzzle brake will absolutely reduce recoil. Great for the range when you're wearing hair protection. Not particularly great for hunting, but that's not a big deal. Take it off when you're hunting. Don't worry about it. Just check the uh, change in the point of impact when you switch from brake to non-brake. The other thing that people don't think about is going to lighter bullets. If you're shooting 180-grain bullets right now, back off to 150s or even 130s, and you will significantly reduce the recoil. So there are a lot of things there. If you're shooting it from a bench... One of the tried and true techniques is take a um, 25-pound bag of shot for reloading, put it behind the butt plate of the gun. Now, instead of shooting a 7-pound rifle, you're shooting a 32-pound rifle, 7 plus 25 pounds for the shot bag. You won't feel it at all. We'll talk a little bit more about that. If you have a technique for taming recoil, call us, 866-TALK-GUN. We'll be right back with more gun talk. 